on tonight's show. We have author and model, Andrea Williams. And now for your host, Cool Paul. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Kick Me With Cool Card Show, episode 109. Thank y'all for tuning in every week. Listen, man, Tuesday nights, 10 p.m., you know it's going down. Kicking it with your boy. Last week, episode 108, I had David Gordon. He is a cartoonist. Had him on the show, um, just displaying some of his artwork, some of the amazing things that he's done and what he's doing and what he's working on. You make sure you check him out at DKG79 on Instagram. I want to say DKG79 or 72, one or two. But anyway, go back and watch the show and you'll know what his tag is. Um, his handle is, you can uh, go support his art, man. He's doing amazing things. His, it's just great. It's great work. So definitely check him out. Support uh, cartoonists and um, sketch artists and drawers and all that good stuff. All right. But tonight we're going to be talking about a book, a new book that has been released. Um, it's called Fearless of the Inevitable uh, by Andrea D. Williams. And she is a return guest on the show. I had her on the show a while back. She was one of my earlier guests. I had her on for her juice company, Organic Beauty by Drea. Um, and we're going to talk to her a little bit about that and see how that's going as well. You know, catch up with her. But uh, without further ado, man, let's jump into this. Let's get it going. Let's see what, all the great things that she got going on with herself. All right. Let's get it, y'all. Everybody, let's welcome Andrea Williams to the show. <laughs> yes, welcome back in the building. <laughs> How you doing, E? Oh, man, I'm doing great. Doing lovely, doing well. God is good. What episode is this again? Huh? What episode is this again? 109. Dang. Right? 109, man. Gotta love that consistency. Yeah, I'm still here. Haven't missed a week since I started. God, God willing, man, I'm not gonna miss a week. Just keep it going until I take this thing to TV. You know what I mean? That's the goal. Exactly. That's the goal. Exactly. Consistency is the key. You're consistent. You're here. You're back again. I told you I'd have you back because I know you're doing a lot of things. You got your hands on a lot of things. Look, I introduced you as author, model, but I know you're an actress, you're an entrepreneur, you got your juice company, Organic Beauty by Drea. You were on a show previously for that. Uh, let's talk about that. How, how's that going for you? So Organic Beauty by Drea is on a halt right now. Um, a lot of the fruits and vegetables that I use are out of season. The prices for a lot of foods um, have gone up with the inflation. So trying to re-change uh, my model so that yeah. it's still profitable, so that I can still be co consistent with providing the juices. Okay. Um, also, with me providing, being so hands-on with my business and doing all the deliveries myself, um, I had a couple of friends, or a friend and then someone who I know, you know, who's an Instagram model, was, you know, a couple people were murdered just oh, wow. from having, you know, a psycho you know, a psycho following, right? Are you serious? There. Yeah. So, you know, recipes, right. tiger, recipes, more. So, you know, a couple of people who I know had been murdered and, you know, from people. So I was like, right. okay, let me, once I started advertising it on Drea the Gemini and I saw certain people placing orders, I right. said, nah. You knew what I it was. You already knew what it, you already knew what I it was from past history, right? Yeah, so so I decided to change my business model. I don't do my own deliveries anymore, just for my own safety with the climate that we're in right now. Yeah. It's just better for me to just find another way to to do it. So I'm just changing my business model right now. But I do have a free ebook coming. Okay. Um on it. 
it's actually done. I just need to format it and put it out there so that people can have it. And um, it'll teach you how to basically make your own juices at home, which is really what I want to do. Um, and then right now I have a link in my bio set up for people to book one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching courses with me. Okay. Um, or, you know, so if they want to book a session with me, they can right now until I get my business model wrapped around how I want to actually execute this in a safe and consistent manner for my, for my customers. Right. Okay. And, and that uh, link for the um, nutrition coaching, send me that link so I can put it in the description for you. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We got to We got to give them access to everything you got going on here. I got a lot. I, that's why I got a link tree. Cause my link, my link tree is like this conglomerative link that has like everything that I have going on. Um, eventually, you know, um, you had mentioned some acting. I do, you know, doing some light acting, taking acting lessons. Mm -hmm. um, you know, working with your guy. Um, um, De Dejour. 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 Yeah. You know, so soon, um, getting some auditions and stuff going. Okay. Um, and shout out to Sean uh, Mixon and, uh, you know, just out here doing my thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it going, man. Keep Portfolio. It... Exactly. This is Black Hollywood. We got to get it. Yeah, man. Listen, if you got that talent to go get it, you got to get it. Why not? It's here. We're going to do it while we still young, you know? Yeah. Shit. Girl. We, we just got to keep doing it, period. Yeah. <laughs> keep doing yeah. it, period. You know what I'm saying? Follow your heart, follow your dreams, and just go for it. Don't worry right. about the noise, what people are saying, or what other people are doing. Damn all that. That don't matter. You know what I'm saying? We just got to stay yeah. consistent on, on, on what we believe in and, and just do the right thing. You know what I'm saying? For ourselves. Yeah. At the end of the day. You know what I mean? So good, yeah. man. I'm I'm glad that you I'm glad that you still that you're still sticking with it though. That your business is still good. You, you know, it's still an entity. You're just yeah. reformatting some things and restructuring for your own safety, which is which is so key, man. Like, and and I I'm glad you're talking about that though because Instagram can be dangerous, especially for females, man. Especially for females, if you got a good follow, you know, a, a nice size following. A lot of people got their eyes on you. You know, if you're beautiful, if you're, you know, you're modeling, of course, you're going to be showing off your body if you're modeling, whatever. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, girls are getting paid doing that. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a business, right? But you got some people that want to take that too far. And, yeah. and just because you're showing off your body on Instagram don't mean you're trying to give your body to everybody on Instagram. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you just got some people that aren't wrapped too tight. So, yeah, man, I'm no. sorry to hear about that. Like, because I have a certain shape, it's not necessarily me showing off my body. It's just my body shows off itself. It exactly. kind of has, like, it does this thing, right? Where yeah. no matter what I have on, yeah. so I'm going to look a certain way. So, um, I mean, I get people, like, I, I, there's times when I've had to drive home a different way from the grocery store just because I felt like somebody who was watching me in the store also, I watch them. I'm watching them watching me, and I'm seeing them get in their car. When I get in my car, and I'm seeing them pull off and go in the same direction I go in, so I go around the corner. You know what I'm saying? And I make a few loopholes because you have to be you have to be so vigilant on what's going on around you. You have to be aware of your surroundings. Yes. Because right now, people are thirsty, thirsty for a lot of things, whether it be attention, money, so, you know, success, anything. People are thirsty for a lot of things, so you got to be careful. Yeah, it's it's tough out here, man. And you know, and listen, they're thirsty for all that, and they're snatching women up. You know, not yeah. they just trying to do something to you. They snatching you up and taking you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's real prevalent out here. Yeah. You know, sex trafficking is. We're like number one. <laughs> yeah. Especially. Yeah, we're like number one, man. We're like number one. Yeah. For yes, sure. Number one. Well, good. Oh, yeah. Good. Good. Definitely. Oh, yeah moving into the city you just never know what you're gonna run into yeah you don't you don't but good but like you said i you know i follow your feed and you tell me all the time like you're a homebody am i correct so that's yes. that's good that's good <laughs> so here's had, the thing I had a TikTok go viral off that, <laughs> hey there's nothing wrong with being a homebody but it, and it's crazy though because it's all about perception right 
if you yeah. if somebody would look to look at your Instagram, they couldn't tell that you're a homebody. It's just what you put out there. But that's that's the beauty of Instagram because all you're doing is expressing yourself. But people will take that as like, oh, she's a party girl, or oh, she likes to get out. And I'm not just talking about you. I'm just talking about anybody who's posting right. on Instagram. Because you, you know, you could be at your friend's house and y'all are having a good time, and it might look like you're you're you know you're out for the night or something. It's just all about perception, you know. But it's good that you can put that image out there. I'm not saying you're even trying to put that image out there. It's just you having fun and just sharing whatever on Instagram. But it's good that you can put that out there and somebody would think that. But you're actually chilling at the house. And they're living, they're living vicariously through your pictures, thinking a whole nother thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah. no, it's just weird. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's like, it's not what I post that they should be even focused on. It's what I don't. It's a lot that go down that I don't post. And I won't <laughs> post it because I don't want people to, you know, you got to keep some stuff private. Yeah. You can't show everything. You can't show your hand on everything. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, here's a, here's a thought. And we're going to get into your book because your book, it focuses on, you know, you've, you've battled with depression, you've battled with suicidal thoughts, which I never knew. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people didn't know. And, and we, I want to ask you what made you open up to that. But I just want to touch on something. I, I wanted to point out one thing. When I heard that or when I read that or wherever I saw it first before we, you know, we're interacting now. Um, and I like to pray before every show. So we got to get to that prayer, too. But I'm just going to make this point. I was like, dang, you know, you can never tell because you model and it takes a certain type of self-esteem, confidence in oneself to model that a lot of people don't have. And then to hear that, man, you, you battle with depression. Obviously, you're in a good space. I'm, I'm praying that you are right now. You're in a good space. But to hear you say that and to be like, damn, well, she models and she has all these pictures and this and that. And a lot of people can't muster up the courage or even feel good about themselves enough to want to show themselves off to the world like that. And you're doing that, but you've dealt with that. You know what I'm saying? You, people just don't know your struggle, man. People don't know people's struggle. But should they? You know? other than you wanting to test, you know, give your testimony and, and help somebody, but should they really know that? No, they shouldn't. But that's why you need to just treat people with kindness at all times because you never know. People might look like they have it all together and maybe they are managing and keeping it together, but you don't know what they're struggling with, you know? So I, I, that just kind of blew my mind when I read that about you or saw that or whatever, wherever I saw it first. I was like, dang. You know, you can never tell. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. Well, let's get into prayer, and I want to touch on some things that you said right there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get that. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for bringing us back together, Lord Jesus. We thank you for Andrea's presence, uh, for her mind, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, for just coming on the show and, and just sharing her life with us, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and her struggles and her triumphs, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus. We just thank you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for just waking us up this morning, for get, just, just putting food on our table, clothes on our back, just giving us all the necessities, all the simple things in life, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and just allow us to enjoy them and appreciate them and appreciate you. Lord Jesus, we just give you all the victory, all the glory, all the love, all the praise. Uh, we just have we just pray for your blessings and your mercy over this interview, and we have a great conversation, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, in your name we pray amen amen yeah I, I laugh at myself because when we first before we started i said we're not gonna make this long but you know it'd be my fault <laughs> <laughs> so i get to talk i'm a gemini so i get to talking <laughs> so that was the other side of you talking about we go, can we make this short <laughs> this side, like we gotta keep this short you in pain the other side is like girl speak your talk your stuff <laughs> but um in the first interview, if, you know, whoever is watching this goes back, I had mentioned that before I started Organic Beauty by Drea, I was in depression mm. because I didn't know what to do with my life. You and did? And I was like trying to figure it out. And so I had did something that was very irresponsible. And I had took, I had went to LA. LA, yep. And just to visit a friend. And I was like, I don't care about coronavirus. I don't care about murder hornets. I'm going to LA and that's when Organic Beauty by Drea was birthed, the idea for it. Yeah. Birthed in that moment. And I think I talked about that in my book as well. I, okay. I did tell that story. Um, but yeah, you know, I was going through a depression then, but I've been battling depression off and on 
for years. I mean, well, most of my life off mm. and on, like, um, since I was, I think the first time I had my first suicidal thought, I was eight years old. Really? Yeah. Do you, can you so, recall what it, took you there to that place? And they, you know, they, they don't know. Um, I talk about all this in my book. So everything that I'm saying now, I talk about it in my book as well. So okay. everybody doesn't have the means, even if the book is only $15. A lot of people don't have $15. They're in depression because of finances. So yep. if this interview can help them, fine. If, you know, everybody's not going to see it. So for those who hear it, I pray that God guides someone to view this video who doesn't have the finances, even if it is just $15. They may not have that. And maybe this will help. This interview will help them. Yeah, absolutely. So, but yeah, I definitely have my fair share of um, battling up and down depressions just because I hurt. You know, I, I love hard and I and I, I hurt when I go through things because I just don't be feeling like I deserve it. Um, why? Also, Can I ask you some, why? Huh? Can I ask you why you feel like you don't deserve it? The way like I feel like when people treat me a certain type of way, mm. just because I feel like, you know... I know karma is on my side that I had made a post and a tweet saying that karma is a saint. Um, I know that karma is on my side, you know, and, um, but it's just like, where's sometimes I'll be wondering where she at. Cause it's like, mm. I put out good. Yeah. And then all of a sudden here comes somebody with some, a problem with me and mm. I haven't talked to them in years, maybe, mm -hmm. or I haven't, you know, I, don't, I haven't done anything or you'll hear people say like, People may not say they don't like me, but the way they treat me, it's, yeah. just, it's, just, it's, it's as if I'm an enemy. Yeah. And it's like, hey, you know, or also me understanding that everybody's not me. Mm -hmm. So everybody don't think like me. So everybody's not going to be as supportive as me. Everybody's not going to be as caring and empathetic. And, you know, when I hear somebody, is, when somebody is talking to me, I go into fix it mode. Okay. Everybody's not like that. Some people will hear your problems and be like, oh, I'm going to pray for you. I hear your problems. So I'm like, uh uh, let's, let, let me find out who's right. hiring. I'm, I'm going to get the hiring manager email before <laughs> you. Email. I'm that person. I'm a hands on fixer. But everybody's not a hands on fixer. And it doesn't, that doesn't make them an enemy and that doesn't make them a bad person. That's who they are as an individual. This is who I am as an individual. And I right. had to learn that throughout, you know, just, just in growing up. Right. Right. Not having to, not taking everything so personal. Yeah. Cause you got, yeah. I mean, listen, even in, in the, listen, man, in this social media world and you're putting yourself out there, people who are miserable hate to see you loving on yourself. So they hate you for, they don't even know you, but it's just Str strange. So, strangers. Yeah. Tearing you, tearing them apart inside because you're loving on yourself and you showing yourself off on Instagram and you showing that you're having a great time. And they don't know, they don't really know what you're going through. You could be going through anything. They don't know, but what they see is killing them because they're miserable with their life or with themselves or whatever their circumstance is, and now they're hating on you because you're you're like a depiction of what they probably strive to be or want to be or what. And they just they can't get out of their rut. They don't know how to dig themselves out that hole. But that negativity is keeping them there. How are you ever exactly. going? How are you ever going to get out of that? But you're negative about any any and everything and everybody. It doesn't work. It. it you had mentioned earlier about, you know, oh, you model, you're very pretty. I can't imagine you going through depression or having those feelings, but pre being pretty is a gift and a curse. No, no, no. Because, That's not what I said. That's not what I said. Uh, I was saying, I was saying modeling takes a certain level of confidence, yeah. you know? Yeah. You pretty, you model. Cool. But the level of confidence that it takes to put yourself out there to model Sometimes people who, who are battling with depression don't have that confidence. That's what I was yeah. getting at. I'm like, so it's just amazing that, you know, you you mustered up that confidence. You have that confidence, that self-belief, whatever, that self-love enough to be able to go out there and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to set that depression to the side and I'm going to still go live my life and do what I love to do. But I still yeah. hurt. I still battle with things. But that's a testimony because that's showing fight. You're not laying down, letting that consume you, overwhelm you, or succumbing to it. Because, you, like you said, you had suicidal thoughts. You're still here. You're living. You're fighting through it. You know what I'm saying? You're still living your life. Oh, yeah. So you're functional, but you still battle. And that's, I think that I developed that over the years. 
you know, um, having battled it for so long since I was a little girl, but um, going back to, you know, being, being pretty or beautiful, being a gift and a curse, especially when you use in social media to expand your brand or to network or to, you know, yeah. I, I, my Instagram to be a, a virtual or visual uh, like portfolio. Right. Correct. So I'm, I'm and I, and it's worked for very very well for me. People who do castings and different things. Uh, people who own magazines. D, shout out to DJ K Slay. Let's pray for him. He's in the hospital right now. Yeah, like definitely. No. And um, because of social media and him posting me. I met several other rappers and several other people who were willing to put me in music videos, you know, because of my social media and my Instagram posts. So it definitely works. But then there's this other side of it where a girl may see that her boyfriend liked your posts and now she don't even know you. She's on a whole nother side of the, the country and she don't like me because her boyfriend liked my posts. Yeah. But the whole reason why I posted it was so I could network so that I could gain, yeah. and, you know, it vested, get vested interest in my brand and what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, or maybe it was to make me feel better because guess what? Some days I feel fat. Some days I feel like I'm not the baddest, but then I have to be like, you know what? But this picture, <laughs> <laughs> I might not have my hair done right now, but you know, on this picture, I was bad. I was bad. I'm bad on that picture. Let me post this to boost my own self esteem. It don't be the world. It's like, no likes is extra. Right. I post pictures I like. And then the world be like, oh, I like it too. That's how I look at it. Yeah, exactly. And feel some type of way or jealous. And it's like, and it always be the pretty ones. And you know what, though? It got nothing to do with you. And you don't know the backstory because you don't know how their relationship has gone. You don't know what has happened between the two. Their man could be a cheater. So now, yeah. they're, so now they're looking at everything he's doing. So, you know what I'm saying? So he didn't put her on high alerts. You just don't know what that relationship and that dynamic is over there has nothing to do with you, you know, but it sucks that they would come at you for yeah. something that their man who they can't trust is doing, you know, because I look at it like this. I don't see anything wrong with going through Instagram and liking people's pictures because from my standpoint, how I think about it and look at it, we're all entrepreneurs or we have some type of business. If I see that a person is on there promoting themselves or their business, I just press like and keep it pushing anyway. Not that I'm over yeah. here thirsting or lusting behind anything, but if I see that yeah. you're promoting yourself, I'll just hit the like button and keep it pushing. I don't know why people can't do that. I don't know why, but I do. And it's, it has nothing to do with, oh, I wanna holler at her, I'm happily married. You know what I'm saying? I can't do nothing for me. That ain't gonna do nothing yeah. for me. But I hit the like button if you over there promoting yourself, if you're a model or whatever, or you 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 know you're doing some sponsorship for some brands or what whatever it is. You know I hit the like button because I hit your like button all the time, right? I hit the like because I'm just supporting. That's it. I'm gonna keep it pushing. Half of the time I don't even surf on there. I just post my stuff. But you know when you're going through doing what you gotta do, you see people's stuff. It pop up. I hit like and I keep it pushing. Yeah. So. And, and it could be that too. Her man could just be supporting. You don't know, but like I said, you don't know what they've gone through. And nine times out yeah. of ten, he probably has given her reason to doubt him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm sure, <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, in general, how there's a lot of it opens the door for even more hate. Yeah. So it's like I don't just have local haters. I got people <laughs> from all over the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. That's crazy though. That's so. If your man is in my DMs, I haven't read it because I don't check those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> unless they sent the cash app, I don't really check them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, I think with me having battled depression for so long and not feeling comfortable really talking about it to you know necessarily my family just because i come from a strong black family mm. so um you know depression I, I i'm old it's old school i'm i'm an 80s baby so for the 80s babies we grew up where depression was like nah you ain't depressed you need to yeah you need to or you need to you need to toughen up or you need to you know what i'm saying depression yep. was a, that was uh 
you could talk about as freely as you can now. Yeah, because you were considered weak. Like, are oh, you just being weak? Get over it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, cry baby. Yep. Or, you know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, uh, and listen. You, oh, ain't nothing wrong with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> And that that's the problem with our community right now, though, because we did come from that. So it, it's it it still lingers. It still lingers because we don't like to talk about it, and we need help, and we won't go get it because it's like, nah, man, I'm I'm being weak. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, I'm cool. And then, not me. I, <laughs> huh? I not me. I got a therapist. My therapist is is amazing. I listen to her in my book as well. Oh wow. Okay. So listen, that's a gym. Anybody who's looking for a good therapist, there it is. Pick up the book yeah. if you can. Go get that. Go get that information, man. Yeah, Thanks. yeah. So, so in my book, I talk about how um, my first encounter with me just really feeling like I was suicidal, and I had went to my grandmother, God rest her soul. Um, I went to my grandmother in confidence, just asking her, you know, please don't tell my mom, because my mom was a single mom, you know, doing the best that she could and. You know, it was just, it was really hard on her. So I went through a lot of different things um, growing up. I don't know if I really touched on it as deep in my book, but, you know, when my father, I'm a, I'm a daddy's girl, but my father is not a, a, a you know, he's a he's a man's man. So he, him and my brother had a better bond than me and my, my, my dad. Mm -hmm. Even though I spent a lot of time with my dad, my dad would more so drop me off at my, um, my aunt's house or something like that and let me be with the girls right. and he would spend more time with my brother had that one-on-one -on -one time more so with my brother right so you know i always I, for some reason i just always felt rejected i don't know why mm. but I, when I'm, okay I always... so it stems so, from childhood and then so yeah. anytime somebody people pleaser in therapy we talked about that you know i became i became this people pleaser where i started to want to be liked you know yeah. what i mean because yeah. i felt like I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was really liked by my mom. The ones who really mattered, the ones who, who had that first impression on you that should have molded you and, and built your self-esteem up. And yeah, it was the ones that should have put that in you yeah. that were doing it to you. So now it's anybody. But my, who, my, my, mom, my mom's relationship is typical. As I've grown older, it's, and I listen to other girls they have the same relationship with they. They had the same relationship they had you know, that I had with my mom. Okay. Because if, especially if they're in my age range, where your mom had to be strong, she had to be the mother, she had yeah. to be the father, everything. You know, she had several. You know, a job and several hustles. And also remembering, like, if, when I was young, when I was eight years old, I thought my mom was old, <laughs> but she wasn't. She was in her thirties. Right. But my mom said and did some things that a young 30 something year old woman would do that from that era and she's a hood chick she from inner city cleveland okay so she's not a suburban you know she's not she's not claire huxtable <laughs> she's not you know the tv show mom she's a very hood get your together yeah pick your up we ain't got time for this type of person so but i was i was such a sensitive child that I took everything so personal Every, too. Yeah, you were delicate. So personal, everything was about everything was about me and how I felt, and I really didn't get to see the real big picture until I got older. But despite that, I still grew up with that. I grew up with that depression. Um, I, I never felt like I was good enough, smart enough. Mm. I felt like not enough. I always felt not enough and rejected. Wow. So I, I always felt like I was better off just not here. So let me ask you this. Do you, can you recall that first time you had the suicidal thought, what triggered that? I don't know exactly what it was, but I know that I went downstairs to my basement, my, where my grandmother was watching TV. And I asked her, do you think anybody would miss me if I was, if I, if I died? I think that's what more so I asked her. I didn't ask her about like, it, but it was alluding to that suicide. Right. You know, I was like you know, if I die, you think anybody would miss me? Right. And she was like, of course. You know, she's like, of course. But she's like, what made you ask me that? And I'm like, I just started crying. I don't even think I gave her an answer. I just started crying. 
and she held me and she told me how much she loved me. And, you know, she's a grandmother, yeah. you know, Christian woman. She poured into me um, with words of wisdom and just all these great things about me that I hadn't really heard like that. Right. You know, I never really heard. I've always heard that I was pretty, but I've never heard like, oh, my God, you're super smart. Oh, my God, you're these great, you know, a great, these great yeah. things. I just remember really hearing a lot of that. They, they, I heard everything. They... I did wrong, but I ain't really hear a lot about what I did right. And and right. I had mom, she's she's funny. You know, like I remember one time I had got an A on one of my tests, and it was a hard test for me. And I was like, Yeah, I got an A. And she was like, That's what you're supposed to get. Uh, <laughs> it's never poured into you, never poured that life into you. And I'm that... saying though, like, you know, you have a sometimes your mom, sometimes <laughs> He's right though, to a degree. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's like that's a kid. But a though. kid needs mom, yeah, exactly. But my mom was young. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, you know, my mom be like, that's what you're supposed to do. Get in there and wash <laughs> them dishes. <laughs> you get an A's on your test, but you way wash the dishes. Like it's all I always felt like it was always something. But it's easy to be critical of our mothers, especially when you're a child and you don't know what all your parents been going through. So that's yeah. why therapy is important because Therapy will highlight the the big picture and not just you and how you internalize everything that was going on around you. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to get into therapy. I mean, I don't suffer from depression or anything like that. And I, I've been I've been depressed, you know, 2009, I think it was my worst year, like lower than low, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. I um I get it. I think I've talked about this before on here, but I get it. Um I was to a point where I finally understood how somebody that's not rooted in God, have no roots there, could take their life. It's easy. I never easy. I never understood that until 2009. And I was like, I told my wife, I was like, I get it now. I said, I would never do it. I know God. I know I got, he has a plan for me. I'm hanging on. But that's all I had when I was that low was God. That's it. Was it nothing anybody could do? Was it nothing anybody could tell me to bring me up out that hole? Not even myself. It's just God. That's it's just God. It's God. It's nobody else. So I get it. If you don't have that, so easy to do it. So easy. Thank, thank, thank God um, for my my grandmothers. You know, on both sides of the, my my mother's mother and my father's mother too. The all the Christian women who really just had me in the church, even when I didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. It matters. Like I said, my mom, my mom was young, so some days she wouldn't even go to church, but she made sure I went to church. Yeah. You know, because I had to get that word and that spirit in me. And in my book, Fearless of the Inevitable, it's basically a, um, I share an epiphany. That, and I have several different epiphanies because, again, I've, I've battled this throughout my life. It's always that voice of reason that always came in and stopped me mm. and said, and change my perspective and change my, my, my thoughts. And so my book, Fearless of the Inevitable, <clears throat> the inevitable being death, is the ultimate epiphany that I had that really stopped me and like changed me from thinking about it ever again. Okay. You know, even even if I do get depressed and I feel like, man, this is this is this life thing is hard, man. I, I really don't want to do this no more. There's always this, what's going on? What's going on that make you feel like you can't live life no more? Because whatever you want to stop, more than likely, that's what you need to stop instead of life. Yeah, yeah. Yo, it's, a, um, it's crazy. It's crazy that we're on here because I just ran across this Arabic quote. And it says, it asks the question like, you want to die? Well, go throw yourself in the ocean and see how quickly you start to struggle to survive. So it's not really you that you, you don't, you don't really want to kill yourself. You want to kill something that's inside of yourself. So you. In the book I say, um, and I heard, I saw something that was similar to that too, but we're all saying the same thing and God is translating it through each individual differently mm -hmm. so that it can hit people's ears differently. But it's the same, it's the same message. What I said was, what you really need to kill is the old version of yourself that no longer serves mm. this new, this new Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There's this version of yourself that you want to kill, but you can do that while alive. You don't have to kill yourself. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and um, whatever problems you're facing or whatever disrespect or you feel like you're rejected, you feel unloved, you feel unsupported, you feel anything, is that killing yourself is not going to stop. It's not going to... We, well, you know, it's, it's unfortunate too that we do get, we do see a lot of dead people get support. <laughs> it's sad. So yeah. Dead people get a lot of support these days. Yeah. On social. But you can, in my book, I talk about how you can create your own community of people that will support you. Because that's what social media is a gift for. In that you find that community of people, which are more than likely going to be strangers. Mm hmm family is not all and your friends are not always your target market we talked about that in the last interview yep um and your family and your friends are your family and your friends for, for, for different reasons you know we're not your family but your friends are your friends for different reasons mm -hmm. your family is your family let's keep them separate yeah don't worry about what they do and don't do to support you you need to go out here and build a community of people of like-minded people yeah that's doing the same things you're doing so when i'm on set i'm networking with girls who like to model and like to act i don't worry about my friends who don't like to model and act and be like oh she hollywood that's miss hollywood over there i don't take that personal no more because you actually would you would say that yeah that's not it's not even something you want to do exactly you know what i'm saying but it's cool because i have these friends over here that love to do that stuff right they love on auditions and we share who's who's got an audition and we share modeling gigs and we do photo shoots and stuff together you know and, th and things like that so it's just about finding like-minded people and not taking everything so personal and feeling like oh whoa well, it's me because nobody's supporting me or loving me no go out here and find a support and find the find a community of yeah. people that's doing what you're doing yeah. you don't have to achieve that and so fearless of the inevitable is don't be, if you're not scared to die, you shouldn't be afraid to live either. Absolutely. Because you have more control over your happiness alive than you do dead. Absolutely. You don't know what's going to happen to you when you die. You don't. We have, we have beliefs. We have, we have beliefs. But I can for sure tell you what's going to happen. For sure. When you get out there and you start talking to people who think on the same wavelength, Mm -hmm. who move in alignment with their dreams like you're doing. Yep. I could see for sure what's going to happen. We don't know for sure what's going to happen if you kill yourself. And that's some scary shit. Like, if you, if you, you know, that's one of the reasons why I never, the real reason why I never really did it outside of just God's voice, I've always been too scared to. It's like, oh, what if I don't do it right? You know, yeah. and then now I'm real messed up. Yeah. Um, so and then what if I do it where am I going to go what's going to happen no one knows it's a lot more scarier when you're about to commit suicide for me than um, if I was to die naturally Right. I don't feel like death when you die naturally will be scary because it's, it's your time and it's going to happen so quick and so unexpected it's not going to be scary Right. like if you Men suicide and really thinking this stuff out. Yeah, it's premeditated. So it's well, it's, then, then you have those too. So now you have so you don't you also have those people who are uh, compulsive, and I talk about this in my in my book too. Um, people who are have compulsive behavior, and they don't really think about any. They're not thinking about where they're gonna go. They're not thinking about if it's gonna hurt. They're not thinking about if it's gonna be successful. Mm. I speak to. Um, family members who have survived living through the pain of having lost a loved one who committed suicide. And in my book, I can talk about that because I'm on both sides. I've had suicidal thoughts. I've also lost family members from suicide. I had an uncle Dave who committed suicide. I have, you know, um, Lucia, my, my, my niece's mother just committed suicide uh, Memorial Day weekend last year. Oh, man. And that's what really made me want to write this book and say, okay, you know what? I got to do this yeah. because I'm I'm losing people. Now I'm losing people who I care about. I thought I was done with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now it's like, okay, 
that's God. I, this book had been on my heart for so long, and I never, I, I was BSing around. Also, 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 real. I was BSing around. Yeah. And that was like my wake up call. Like you keep on playing and not putting out this message, and you, you, cause you see what's happening. Yeah. So that's what made me really go full throttle and say, if I don't do anything else in 2021, I'm gonna get this book done. And that's what I did. I hired me a publisher and got it done. There you go. And it's, it, and it's needed. Somebody yeah. needs to read it. Somebody needs to hear this. And you used to be that person that needed the book. So here you go. Do yeah, it's a, and it's a self-help book. So um, again, this hopefully this interview will help somebody who's ever thought about it and feel like they want to commit suicide. I totally get it, but... Life can be enjoyable alive. You can escape the pain alive. You can, I put my phone on do not disturb quite often. <laughs> I do. I, I disappear often. I'm going to Cabo, Mexico Friday. I'm disappearing again on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody doesn't have the opportunity to do stuff like that. But that's what my book is. Um, a self-help book in that at the end of every section, there's questions and prompts that helps people outline ideally how they would like they like to go. So most people who commit suicide will usually write a suicide letter. Mm -hmm. This is helping you create a life plan instead. Or it's, if, if you write in it, if you read these questions and you still feel negative when you're answering them, I ask the reader to give it, give this book with the questions filled out to someone you love to spark the conversation of what's wrong with you. Because that mm. question used to bother the hell out of me. When I was going through depression and people would be like, are you okay? I would be so offended because no, I'm not okay. And I don't know why I'm not okay. Sometimes you don't know why you're not, would okay, you, not Would okay. you tell them you're not okay? No, because they're not, because mainly because I feel like you, one, you don't care. For so, real, for the, real. so the question was, what the hell's wrong with you? Not like, hey, what, you know, what's, what's going on? The or it could be, it could be one of those two. Okay. It could be one of those. It could be like, are you okay? Or what the hell is wrong with you? Or, yeah, right. you know what I'm saying? And either way, I would be annoyed because one, I didn't necessarily know the answer of what was wrong with me. And this book helps you figure that out. Okay. You know, and just helps, it just helps you just detail out everything that's going on with you internally, or it can help you create a life plan, a, a life plan, either or. So um, it's either gonna help you create a life plan or it's gonna help spark the conversation to help you articulate to someone that you love, who you really know will care enough to, to, to understand, like who really wants to understand what's going on with you, Right. give this book to them with it filled out and let them understand this is what's going on with this person who I love. So and I and I was going to ask you, do you explain in the book how to approach writing the life plan? Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, a quest, it's questions and, and writing prompts. OK, got you. Got you. Yeah. At the end of the set, at, at the end of each section. And the, and the book is a short read okay. because I didn't know who, I, who my audience. I knew who I, my target audience was, but I didn't know who was necessarily going to be reading the book. Okay. Either way, the average person doesn't read books anymore. Let's just keep it real. Nope. And I wanted, I wanted this book to be something that was interesting. That's why I put my story in there. I was very transparent, something that I did not want to do. And that's what really took me so long to write this book was. Oh, uh, okay. I don't want to let people know that I have these thoughts and they'd be looking at me like, oh, Lord, she crazy. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I don't want people to think that about me. But I had to make it clear in my book that. These are these. This is how I used to feel about life, and this is how I now feel about life. Which is, I really don't care what none of the people think. <laughs> right. I don't care who support me, don't support me. God's plan is my like what God has for me is for me. The support may not come from the ones you expect, but it's gonna come from strangers you never met. Yep. Yep. It may not come from the ones you expect, but it's gonna come from people you never expected, and it's real. <laughs> Yeah, because like things just fall in your lap. It seemed like it just fall in your lap when you let go 
and you let God, things just fall in your lap. Yep. And it doesn't matter who support you, the support going to come. Yeah, it's going to come. Your- yeah, man. Trust me. I was just thinking about that. I was just like, um, you know, you can't allow the lack of support to make you feel as though you're not doing enough or what you're doing is ineffective. It's effective. People turn a blind eye. People have their agendas. People have their reasons for not even just clicking like on an Instagram post, even even though it's so much bigger than that. But that's just an example. You can't allow, you know, you posting your stuff, you know, you're posting your business or whatever, and you, you're getting five likes or 20 views. Or- but, <laughs> right. Or then you post some bullshit and then you get 100 or 500 views and likes because you know, whatever, but you're promoting your stuff. You can't allow the lack of to make you feel like you're not doing enough or it's ineffective. That's bull. Just stay, stay consistent. They see it. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it's only going to take that one thing to make everybody flood in and hit that like button, hit that like button. Cause now they want to jump on the bandwagon. So, um, prime example, my TikTok page, I had a TikTok that went viral before and I had like 24,000 followers on TikTok, but it got deleted. Okay. They, they TikTok took me out the game. And so then I created a new TikTok account and, and I told, I was posted and I might get like a hundred views or less. Mm. Uh, I think the most views I ever got on a video on my new, on that second page was maybe like three or 500 and I continued to post. It didn't matter. Yeah, I wasn't posting it. at that time. I was really posting it because I liked the editing features and I liked the sounds that was on TikTok. And I was using, I was doubling up on my content. I was using TikTok content and posting it to Instagram. Posting Instagram, yeah. So I mean, I was just on there having fun. I really wasn't. Think, it, it really wasn't about likes or views. I didn't care. When that video that I made that went viral went viral, I had seventy six followers. I created that video because I was doing a promo video for a company called Ernesto Martillo. They had paid me to do an Instagram post. So I already had the outfit on. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to record this TikTok real quick because I remember the sound I had heard. So I was like, I'm going to record this TikTok. And I'm talking about one take. The video is maybe, it's less than 10 seconds. And I was eating, the, I, was, I had already... May, you know, like have my little sea moss popsicles that I be, that I also sell through Organic Beauty by Drea, sea moss infused popsicles. And I'm sitting there eating my popsicle and I'm listening to the sound. I said, you know, I'm just going to react to it. I'm going to do a blind reaction to it. And I I posted it. I don't even think I left a caption, no, no, no hashtags, no nothing. Mm-hmm. I just posted it, went to sleep, woke up the next morning, didn't check TikTok until that night, the following night. And I had like 50,000 something views. I had like 12,000 followers. I went from 76 followers. <laughs> 76, E. Wow. 76 to like 13, 12, 13,000 followers in one night. That is and crazy. I have 2.3 million views on that video, but, and I have over 100,000 followers on TikTok, but I'm like, yeah. All my videos was getting a hundred views, two hundred views. It be and the video is simple. It's like we, if you was to watch it, you'd be like, "This went viral." Like, it's still on yeah. there. <laughs> it's still on there right now. Yeah, it's still going. The views is going. I'm at two point three million now because I was tri- I was tripping when I got to one million, and then <laughs> I got to two million. I'm like, "Oh, I, I done made it, Carla." I'm like, "Wait a minute, Carla, give me a lawyer on the phone." <laughs> Where's my lawyer? <laughs> and so now I'm at 2.3. So I'm like, it's, I mean, it's still going. I'm still getting notifications for comments on that video. Wow. What's your um, what's your handle now, on there? My point was, my point is saying that is your support can come out the blue. Your support is going to come from, the, I don't know, none of these people. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't know. So you just have to keep going and you just have to. It's not even just about social media. You just have to do whatever it is you feel like you are doing. Do it not for attention or likes or follows. Do it because it's fun. Yep. Do it because, because I I was having fun. All the videos where I took time to to edit it and make sure it was prim and proper, my hair was perfect. 
them videos did not go viral. It was the one where my hair, I think I needed to brush my hair. You know, <laughs> that's the video that went viral. So just be, your, you know, be yourself. You never know when it's what's what's gonna blow, when it's right. gonna blow, but it's gonna blow. You just have to believe in yourself. You mm. have. I know that sounds so cliche and corny. And no, but it's the truth. It's the truth. It's the, you have to believe in yourself. It's the truth. You have to believe in yourself. It doesn't matter if your parents don't believe in you, your your siblings, your friends, the nobody. It, none of that matters. Yeah. Your your support, God already has. They're coming. Yeah, they're and coming. You ain't never <laughs> yeah at the end of the day you just gotta stop caring just stop caring and just just the more, do the, it the more you the, the, the more you like i don't know universally it's like energetically it's like you hold yourself in contempt when you care so much yeah but when you just do it in the spirit of fun and it's light and it's not so oh i gotta make it right it's more so, I'm having and not fun, so I'm dressed it. up not so dressed yeah. up I'm making it because I'm having fun. Right. You know, that's when that's when everything comes. No matter what it is you're doing. Yeah, and you, know? you and you never know what people are gonna like. So that's why you have to do it for yourself. And eventually, do it, do it. You like it, and everybody else is like it's extra. Yep. Like you yeah. said, yeah, definitely do it because you like it. Everything else is extra, and then I somebody's gonna you. like it. Somebody's gonna like it because they're like-minded people. I don't know I find this hilarious. <laughs> Huh? But I be thinking like I know I ain't the only one that find myself funny sometimes. Like, you know that's that's how I think. And lo and behold, I'm not. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. What's so, I, I, what, what? Okay, let's do self analysis. What is one okay. thing? What's one thing that you feel that you need to work on for yourself to get to where you're going? Um. I need to, everybody's in this self-love, self-care thing, you know, and it, they're putting themselves first. I feel like I've done that a lot, mm -hmm. actually, and I feel like I need to collaborate more. Okay. I feel like um, I need to get out of my head and not just think about me yeah. and be too over consumed with me and think about others. So what I've been doing as of lately is when I see a pretty girl on set and I'm like, what's your following and it's low, I'm like, let's do a video together. I'm gonna try to boost your following. Mm. I, thinking, I always was thinking me, 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 I, 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 I. Yeah. Now I'm thinking, let's collab. I'm thinking more collaborations than more so I, 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 I. Yeah. I know we're in this world of self-love, self-care, and put yourself first. I think naturally I'm going to do that anyway. But it's also good to, when you see other people doing great things, link with them and, and y'all can come up together. Yeah. Because then that's how that's how everybody else in the industry, if you think about it, they're like, oh, yeah, I went to high school with this person or, you know, we grew up together or I've been knowing this person for years. Yep. You know, you, you, know, you blow up. I blow up and we could be like, oh man, cookie, we go back. You know what I mean? <laughs> yep. The relationships in the industry is the is the ones where they had a relationship prior to making it. Yeah. So if you see somebody that's dope, collab with them. Yep. Because it, when they not if, but when they blow up and you blow up, now y'all out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know and, and you're right. Saying? You're right. You see so I many people within the industry and you don't have to really go out here and meet the other people and, and try to and hopes that they'll accept you you got your own click where y'all and already y'all already know each other right and y'all got memories that go back that they don't know nothing about exactly yeah you the new friend now you see what i'm saying yeah yeah and, 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 and like, people like people that. help the people that they like and that's just the fact of the matter so if you go in you so if you're in the industry and you got your homeboy who's an exec over here and can pull you in and this deal or what that's how it happens that's what happens yeah that's just the way of the world yeah man yeah and that's what we should be network you know when we say we out here networking are you networking or are you trying to grow your following right 
I'm networking and that, you know, if I get an opportunity and they're like, hey, we need some more people or, you know, we got this short film and we, we need we need some people to audition. Yeah. I'm sending text messages to this person, that person. Like I already have my Rolodex of people who I know I need to reach out to, who I know also act and want to do this, who I can reach out to and say, hey, these people is looking for talent. Right. You know what I'm saying? Submit your stuff. That's yeah. what you, that's what that's what I want. That's as far as self analysis. I need to think more on a collaborative level and not on an I or me level. So yeah, I, I've no. I've been utilizing um. I've been utilizing a DM. You know, for me, that's how I pretty much. Okay. Go with people like people that I have on my show. I just stay in contact with them. We DM. We share stuff. We talk. You know, throw something my way, I throw something your way. Like that's how I've been building with people because I'm like you. I don't get out much, you know. Yeah. I do my show. I don't have to go nowhere. You know what I mean? And whatever yeah. else I got going on, I really don't have to go anywhere. And I'm an introvert. I like to be when when I turn this off, this entertainment yeah. stuff off. I want to be alone. Leave me the hell alone. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's how I am. So for me to just interact with people and just kind of keep that relationship and keep that network growing. I just hit the DMs, man. You know, I've been in the DMs with them before the show anyway. You know, we we link on Instagram a lot of times. We be in a DM, you know, I send out the flyers, you guys promote, whatever. And I just keep that relationship going. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. So yeah, yeah. man. Uh, yeah, but you and you don't want to do it with people where it makes sense too. Yeah. You ex know exactly. Everybody's a photographer. Like, you know, I get that a lot, like with my DMs. I check DMs with people I know, like you, you know, yeah. people who I know, who I've worked with, who I know are creeps, right? Right. But you got a lot of photographers who are creeps. Yes. Listen. And they like, I want to do a free shoot for, with you, but I already, my shooter is HQ, Mr. Mister HQ. If it ain't Mr. HQ or Keisha, I don't shoot with them. Yeah. Because you know, I, I got to, or I have to know you. Like there is, there is one other photographer who I work with. He, he, now nah, he's, he cool. He, and he takes good shots of me. Um, but he's usually more of an Atlanta scene photographer. So he, his pictures be out there. Um, he's kind of like ATL. Um, what's that one guy? A Atlanta. ATL. ATL. Yeah. Like he's kind of like on that level. Okay. You know, yeah. I trust, I like him. I like his photography, but if I don't know you, and haven't had a chance to really engage with you. I'm not really just trying to come to your studio, right? And sh you. yeah, a lot of home studios, and then they be wanting to give you wine to relax. You like, I'm not doing none of that. <laughs> I'm go, I ain't gonna do that to me. Yeah. I, you know, I, I didn't get it too. I'm too smart for that. You know what I mean? So I feel like I can't let them get me. Yeah, man. You know? They'll try you. Trust me. Listen. This is not only with females. Like when I was in New York and I was modeling, man, I had gay photographers trying to tell me, hey, won't you won't you take this off? Can you oh you don't have to go back there and change? You can change right in front of me. The hell I can. I've heard stories. Like for real. Like it, it goes both ways. It's crazy. It's real. I've heard they really utilize that, you know? It's 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 leverage to them to kind of get what they want. Yeah. Have a good time yeah. and whatnot and see what they want to see. You're like, nah, man. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you know, where like I said, you know, collabing where it makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um so yeah. And you know, so, and, you, and you know, you know the ones you, you can collab with, you know, you feel the energy, you feel the vibes, you know. You know what I'm saying? You know who you guys gotta keep on the side over here and be like, all right, we cool, but that's as far as it goes, you know. So yeah, yeah, that's cool, yeah. man. So tell tell everybody where they can find the book, where they can get the book. So the book is out on Amazon right now. Um, if you want to get it, it's free shipping. It's fifteen dollars. It's gone on Amazon. You can um, search "Fearless of the Inevitable." Actually, you can click the link yes. below. Yep. And get straight to it. Um, also, um, I'm gonna be doing a few pop up shops. I have one coming up in. Um, February in North Decatur. Okay. Where I was doing a pop up shop, but I got my own personal security. That's gonna be <laughs> just in case. Just in case. I'm just 
scared. Hey, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. I watch too much. I watch too much news and stuff. I'm getting older, so like I watch the news and mm -hmm. I be like, oh, "Girl, you gotta turn that news <laughs> off." I live in the city, like, hold on. You gotta turn that news off, man. That news will have you paranoid. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, what? I did not know Atlanta was this. I, I mean, I just be walking around out here like, yeah, how y'all doing? Mm -hmm. Then I just be moving around. And I watch the news. I'm like, I was just over there. Right. Oh, heck no. You better watch the news so you know what's going on. No. There's a lot going on in Atlanta. I got my ear to the streets, but I can't watch that news every day. I can't do it. It's a scary reality show. But but I have my um security there. <laughs> You can never be too safe. That's my motto. I don't care. People be like, man, did it? No, you can never be too safe. I don't give a damn. I don't know Hollywood stuff. Just on some regular, like, I need somebody. I just I just feel comfortable having somebody there who I know is, a, you know, um, care about me enough, right. you know. And so, but I do have a few pop-up shops. Um, even for my juices, I'm going to be selling my juices more so through pop-up shops and and. and you know, um, in the, the more independent route, okay. maybe some food mm -hmm. and okay, yeah, do 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 that. Yeah, that'd and be dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, that'd um, be really dope, actually. If you could provide, yeah. even if even if you're not there all the time, and you can work out a deal with somebody where they provide, you know, they sell your stuff on their food truck. Exactly, just come up with a wholesale price. Yeah, and for it. Yeah, yeah. So. We're, gonna, we're coming up with ways, um, but I'm going to do a few, a book signing in, in February. Okay. I do a book signing in February um, and do a pop-up shop. And I, I want to put together an event, um, probably in the springtime, I might put together an event and I'll probably create like a close brands list, people who've been supporting Organic Beauty by Dre day, since day one, like my day ones. Okay. <clears throat> should be on the lookout for... An invite, which includes you, you know. <clears throat> no, somehow. don't include me, cause I'm horrible. I still didn't order. That's I know. Okay. No, like no. The but listen. Part for me, cause everybody doesn't. It, you know, if, if that's and then too, if it's not your, if you're not really into like the juice and stuff, like you're not really into all of that, then if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. You don't have to make it your thing just because I have a, your friend has a business. No, but listen, though, I had every intention on buying it, but I'm going to tell you what happened for real. The day, uh -huh. remember I hit you up and I said I wanted to try the sea moss? Uh-huh. Why my wife come home with some that same damn day? Oh, <laughs> uh, really? But was it good? It was good? Yeah, it, it was pretty good. Yeah, it was pretty good. So that kind of set me back. So I'm like, well, damn. All right. So if you got this, I'm not going to buy it yet. And then I just never got around to buying it. So how did you feel when you took it? I felt pretty good. I felt refreshed, I guess. I, I don't really know how to explain it. Like, I, I don't I'm know. I'm going to say this. Um, I had, you know, a breast lift, breast reduction surgery like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And overdid it on set and I was in a lot of pain. I had a lot of inflammation in my, my left, my left chest. And I took a, I had not been, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I had not been drinking my smoothies. Okay. I had a champagne, I'll be real with you. I had a champagne diet from like the first, from like, you know, ever since New Year's <laughs> Eve, I had been doing like champagne, okay. champagne and water. So I stopped the champagne. I started drinking a lot of water. Um, I took a sea moss smoothie. When I tell you, I felt so much better the next day. Wow. I'm telling you, like, and I'm like, and I've been on my sea moss ever since. I'm like, why did, why did you ever like, duh, right. why did you ever? So yeah, so I get it, I get it. But, but true sea moss will have you feeling like your joints will feel a lot, you know, lubricated. Um, You'll feel more energetic. You'll have less inflammation in your body. I mean, mm, okay. So many different things. Well, listen, when you, when you when you get it up, when you get when you ramp it back up, let me know so I can support you. Like I try to keep my word, man. So just let you know, I've never forgotten it, and I'd be like, damn, I still never supported that girl. <laughs> but you, support for 
me is the shares, is the interviews, is the platform for me to express and, and let people know that I exist. So yeah. support my ways. That's why when people do nothing, I take note. Yeah. It's okay. But I take note. When people do nothing, yeah. I'm talking about not like, not even a I tap, know. not engagement, not even a share, not even the simplest, freest stuff. Yep. It's cool. And then and then what happens? What's the first thing they, that come out their mouth when you see them? Well, 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 when you blow up or when no, well, when they see you on TV. No, now though, what's the first thing they'll say? Oh, I see you still doing your juice stuff. Oh, look, you know, you <laughs> right. That's the first thing to come out their mouth, right? People gonna start seeing me on stuff, and they gonna be like, "Hey, friend," and I'm gonna be like, "Hey, girl, make sure you get your ticket to come inside." <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> You damn right. Buy that ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, uh, I gotta say that for my supporters. I got a lot of those, and I want to make sure that I, you know, show love back. Yeah, absolutely. So, what's what, what's the last thing that you want to say? Is there anything, any last words you want to say? Anything else you got? You working on? What's going on? Um, I mean, I have a um. Shout out to 5050 Magazine and mm. um, everything that they're doing over there at Playhouse Studios. Um, but I just want to leave on this note that um, whatever you're going through in life right now, no matter how big or how small or none of that, none of that matters, this too shall pass. And for those who hey, say hey. they don't like that, I promise you, this is not your first storm. This is not your first rodeo. You've been through ups and downs before. You know, life is one big roller coaster. You just got to enjoy the ride until it's over with because life is so temporary. And one thing I can mm -hmm. one thing I guarantee you, life is so temporary. And so you're going to die. I know it sounds horrible to say, but you're going to you're going to die anyway, so you might as well make the best of the life the little bit of life that you have left. Absolutely. Trust me, nothing you actually do. There's nothing you need to do as far as taking your life. Don't take your life. Take your life in your own hands, but don't take it away from your not your loved ones. Yes, but yourself most importantly, because this too shall pass. Amen. <laughs> we'll end it on that. Amen. So I hope Amen. everybody that you, you know, this was well received. Um, anybody out there that's dealing with depression or suicidal thoughts or anything like that, you know, seek some therapy, get a book like Andrea's book, Andrea's book, like just do something, but don't take your life, you know, and, and pray, get wrapped up in God, get rooted in God. I mean, I don't know who your God is, but whoever he is, is real, whoever. you know? Yeah. yeah. Whatever you worship, it's real. Get rooted, man. You got to get rooted. You got to get rooted. So, yeah. Hey, guys, I, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, this has been a special one because this is, man, this, this, this is needed. This is needed for what everybody's going through. I don't care how good you got it. Everybody needs some therapy. Everybody goes through. Everybody needs to see about their mental health, period. Just like you go to the doctor for your body, get a checkup. Get your mind checked out, man. We all go through things. We all struggle with things. You know, we all have thoughts. We all have disappointments and letdowns and stuff, and we all take blows and we just absorb them and keep going. But eventually, eventually it catches up. So seek some help, seek some therapy, pray on it, and just be happy to wake up every day because it's one more opportunity, one more shot to change your life, to change the world, correct things, whatever you want to do with it. You got one more shot, at least one more shot. So that's a, that's a gift. It really is a gift. All right. Um, Andrea, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming back on the show. You're always welcome. Anything you got going on, let me know. You know you can get back up on this platform. Uh, love having you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But listen, guys, you know where I'm at. Every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm right here kicking it with people like Andrea doing great things, dropping gems, dropping nuggets. Here to help you, and we can't do it without you, all right? Until next time, peace and love. We out of here. <laughs> <laughs>